When they named their first album, And Now the Legacy Begins, it was hubris and maybe a bit of bluster. Today, it's impressively prescient. That first record from the Dream Warriors put them at the forefront of the early 1990s Canadian hip hop. It was just the beginning of their contribution to a scene that would go on to launch some of the biggest names in music today, including Drake and The Weeknd. And we're so pleased to welcome founding members of the Dream Warriors, King Lou and Capital Q, to our studio tonight. Yes, yes. Welcome to you both. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yes. I don't know if you noticed, when I said the six, it sounded a bit awkward. Yeah. yeah. For me, I'm still kind of old school. I prefer <laughs> the T dot. Well, what about yeah. you guys? Well, I don't mind the T dot. I don't mind the six, just yeah. as long as we're mentioned. You know, and it's funny because if you look at flyers from back in the day, mm -hmm. um, they didn't even have area codes on them. You know what I mean? So right now everybody's on an area code tip, so. 416, I still have a 416. There it is. Yeah, There's so no 647 for me. And I'm trying to keep it. <laughs> well, we're the realest of the real, so. Um, I want to talk about your career mm -hmm. and about the music scene in Canada. Um, first though, let's go to the very, very, very beginning. How mm -hmm. did you two meet? Luke? Uh, we met in a neighborhood called Jane and Finch. I was just a uh, creative, young. In Toronto? Jane in Toronto, Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Jane and Finch in Toronto. I was a young kind of, um, you know, creative, uh, graffiti, dancing, dancing um, designing, like just trying to express myself type of dude. And um, when me and Q kind of first actually got to know each other, we were kind of got into a little tiff between each other, like, a, you know, and I think that brought about a respect because in, in, when you grow up in the hood, I grew up in, in, in such an environment where respect is everything. Sometimes you don't have a lot available to you, opportunities or, uh, or others, so. Is that why respect is so important? I think it's so important for that, for, that, for that reason. So it's very hard to be creative and gain respect because if you're doing something different, a lot of people aren't really down for change. But um, I was one of those type of guys that a lot of people in school rooted for because I would do something different and they'll be like, oh man, that's him doing, going, doing his thing oh, no, again. They'd they, 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 they be like, yo, that's that, that's that Louis dude, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They I just mean, expected it. Yeah. They just expected it. So if you were in the cafeteria and there was different spots, yeah. like, you know, they're playing cards and gambling on one side, they're playing and chess. And gambling? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then on one corner, they're, they're pounding on the table making beats. I would be able to go to each section, which is very unique. Uh -huh. Some of the people would just stay in their sections and would never move out. So I was playing Dungeon and Dragons, chess, and then, you know, gambling with the boys here, and then graffiti and pounding on tables, making rap beats on the other side. So, so Q, I want to ask you, because mm -hmm. you know him very well, yeah. what do you think it is about him that allowed him to be able to move through all those different crowds, I guess? Yeah, Q. <laughs> <laughs> what allowed him to do it is that the dude was just doing what, he, what was on his mind. Yeah. Anything that he wanted to do, he just did it. Yeah. You know, and he wasn't hurting nobody. He was just doing himself, right? He was just doing what he felt he wanted to do, and it was different than everybody else. Um, from for me, we meshed because I was in a, I was into dancing, so battle. Mm -hmm. Don't let him fool you. He was crazy. He was crazy. You know what I mean? He was, so he was very, very you know, a b boy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, how so nice. that's uh, that's why you know every at, at first people be like, this kid is this is a weird kid, because he used to cut. I used to cut his hair. He used to do some crazy styles with his mm. hair. So they'd be like, yo, what's up with dude's head? Yeah, I used to do all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he didn't care. So well, it, I mean, it, even they, just, they just accepted after a while. Even when you're, um, um, I want to ask you where the name Dream Warriors comes oh, okay. from. OK. So just keep that in your head for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. But just to follow up on what you're saying, um, when it comes to um, the music industry, especially at that time mm -hmm. with rap music, Doing something different, mm -hmm. I think, took uh, a bit of courage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you agree with me? Yeah, yes, it I took, do. It took courage, but mm -hmm. when you're doing something for yourself, like just doing it to do it, being creative, you're not really afraid of the difference. You're hearing everything else, but you're doing what's coming out of your mind mm -hmm. and, and in your way, right? And you respect what's going on, but you're just doing it because it's fun. It's like, I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to do this way. You don't realize that, you know, people looking at you going, you know what? I'm not, I, I don't feel that. Mm -hmm. And you don't care because you're not really paying attention to all of that. When you be, well, so when, when did you decide to become the Dream Warriors and where did the name come from? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, Q's name is, is Q because he doesn't speak much. You see, we, used, we call him the Quiet Storm, so we gave him that name. So I'm surprised yeah, that yeah. he's... He's talking so much even in this interview. But 
like Dream Warriors was a, was a name that was based off of a belief of being a warrior of your dreams. Yeah, I remember. You know, being a fighter of what mm -hmm. you believe in. We always struggle with the question of was Dream Warriors two people or was Dream Warriors more than two people? So when we started to get into actually recording, I, I, I was doing backups for Mishy. Uh, back in those days, and when we started Mishimi. to Mishimi, Queen of Canadian the Queen of the Queen of Hip Hop, she's like uh, you know our our own, mm -hmm. you know. So when we were when we were coming about doing Dream Warriors, uh, uh, like just building a, a legacy for Dream Warriors, you know what I mean? It, it it kind of was like, do we do do we make a movement, or do we just represent two guys? Do we do a whole neighborhood push, or or, or so forth? So. Me and Q just said, listen, we're just going to do it this way. And, 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 and we grabbed a few guys from around the way. It was like Blast. Yeah. Actually, um, Blast was origin uh, one of the one original of the members. Original members yeah. And two of the dancers, uh, Frankie and Derek, were Warrior One and Warrior Two. I'm going to explain who they are. Mm -hmm. And myself and Q. And the leader, um, you had two more members. Yeah, so we had a five five-man group. I'll try to be quick. I'll try to be quick. <laughs> okay. So we had a five-man group, and um, the two dancers had other visions of where they seen themselves going. Yeah. Because right at that time, we weren't making any money. Mm -hmm. So the thing for us was we were performing out of the sheer passion of our own personal dreams. It wasn't based off of trying to build a foundation, and our dream wasn't trying to take over the world of rap. Mm -hmm. It was celebrating the music and celebrating what we were doing. Some people had other visions and wanted to go other ways. So we allowed them to do that. And through that process, the same Frankie and Derek became Maestro's dancers. Right. Yeah. So now, you know, Maestro's, Maestro Fresh West. Maestro, yeah, Maestro Fresh, Fresh West. West. So <laughs> in that process, we realized that, you know what? Our dream of being a warrior, it could actually, that philosophy can go for other people who don't even rap. You know what I mean? And that springs after our first legacy album, that concept transcended through all our albums. So when we, when we dropped our first album, that was like a collection of all our life, our life to that point. Mm -hmm. So let's say our, our album released, I don't know, 90, 91 to 90, yep. right? Everything before that is what makes that album. Mm -hmm. Us being kids, us being teenagers, all that sort of thing. So it was very hard to decide what to keep and what to what to push and what to pull, because we had all kinds of songs. We had straight, ghetto songs. And then uh, uh, when we shopped to get that deal for that first album, it was four, four song EP yeah. that our manager, Ivan Barry, mm -hmm. of Beat Factory Productions, yeah. went over to England. Legend. And yeah, <laughs> legend in the game. Mm -hmm. And went over into a, we call him Small Act. Yeah. Cousin, <laughs> like Bob Marley? Bob Marley, cousin <laughs> Chuck. You need a small axe yeah. and you, you want to hit a big tree. Cousin big tree. Right. Mm. So he went over there to chop down the big tree in England. And uh, on his way back, shopping our, 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 our demo, somebody stopped him inside of the airport and said, listen, I don't want you guys to go nowhere. Mm -hmm. We want these guys. And I think the song that really sprung it off was Wash Your, uh, face, Wash Your face, face in My Sink. There was another one built for the 90s. It was Roll of the 12-Sided Dice, mm -hmm. which dealt with I don't know if anybody knows about Dungeons and Dragons. They have little dice. They have all oh, these different types. Oh, there's a lot of people types. on the agenda who know about <laughs> oh, Dungeons and Dragons. Well, big thing. I won't well, call any names out. <laughs> well, 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 you know, you know, yeah. twelve-sided dice was a special thing because that's the only place you could find it. So we just yeah. represented that whole. We didn't deny that part of of, of our upbringing. So anyway, mm -hmm. so because some people think that's a bit like. Well, yeah, yeah, back smart, then, nerd or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not bad to be a nerd, by the way. Uh, hey, I do what I do. Yeah. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I do what I do. So. Now he's over there, come back, album's out, Dream Warriors. We have a concept of what we are. We're a little bit more solid in our own personal dreams, and we're allowing other people to do their, their dreams, even if that denies being in our collective, even mm -hmm. if they're doing something so with, like So basically Maestro. what you're saying, it wasn't about the collective, it was it about was the about music. It was about music and, and, the, and, art. and, and, and yeah. the art. Now, after the first album comes out, Hit. I want to go back to the first album, yeah. oh, okay. not to cut you off, uh, but when uh, Ivan was in England, yeah. B -B BBC Radio 1 played uh, Wash Your Face in My Sink. Yes. Yes? <laughs> the, the Wash Your Face <laughs> was in England first. Yes. Yes. Before but you didn't really go, want that to be your first going sing in, single. Yo. There's, there's, listen, there's a lot of stuff we wanted to be singles that yeah. didn't become but they, singles. But, but the but audience the, wanted that. That's what the people loved, so, yeah. they, so it became the single. A, a dude by the name of Nick Smash is the one that 
that hooked that up. He he just took the record out there. Uh-huh. It hit up. It hit BBC or whatever, uh-huh. and they got crazy with it. And then we ended up going over there. Now, the minute something new comes out, people mm-hmm. people haven't heard. They want to put it in a box. And your music was described as alternative, hip hop, jazz, rap, quirky, uh, quirky. What did you think of all those labels? Um, at first, it was a little bit annoying because it was kind of highlighting one song. Mm-hmm. And we were so much more than just one song. Yeah. So it, it was a little tricky on that, on, that, on that note. But then we were so glad to be uh, expressing ourselves on something somewhere other than just you know, our bedroom. You know what I mean? We have that song. We can just play a little bit of it. OK, sure. let's roll it. <laughs> let's let them DJ know what we're Sheldon. talking about. You watch your face in my sink, in my sink, sink. You watch your face in my sink, in my sink, sink. You watch your face in my sink, tougher. That's what I'm getting, I'm getting rougher. And you beat me, suffer. The loss of an attempt well tried. Well, your side tried, but my side will never be denied. Cause I'm swinging and stinging neglection with an injection of truth. I've come to untwist the twisted you. How does it feel now that I got you all to think? Yeah. And watch your face in my oh yeah! Twenty five oh, yeah. years ago, like that's, wow. that's like that, twenty five years ago. See that video? I'm mm-hmm. still looking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still doing that it. That video <laughs> yeah. was all improvisation. Everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything. What, what do you think when you see that? Well, I think that's amazing because even even though Q was very light in saying that they played it on BBC and a few radio stations, mm-hmm. they actually released it on a pirate radio station mm-hmm. before they actually. St- wanted to sign us. Yeah. They wanted to yeah, play yeah. it and test it. And it just it went, went crazy. Yeah. It went all over the uh, yeah. like the pirate radio stations. People were like, where is that? Who is that group? Mm-hmm. How are they mixing this rap with, with, with jazz? And what, like, they just couldn't figure it out where it was coming from. And that was one of the things that sealed it on Island Records, which is the home of Bob Marley. Mm. Now, Island Records, you got to think of it as a small little label, but it's a big Super thing. Super powerful, yeah. Super powerful because mm-hmm. they went all the way to the islands and got Bob Marley out of the bush Mm -hmm. to represent who he was. So we felt that's a great home for us. Fourth and Broadway was their Mm -hmm. uh, affiliate. Yeah, their affiliate inside of the States. Mm -hmm. So we uh, linked up with Fourth and Broadway. Who were you listening to when you made that album? Uh, So many different influences. Jungle Brothers, all them cats. um, uh, Rakim, Mm -hmm. Run DMC. (laughs) You mean, you, mean, you, mean, you mean making legacy? The, yeah, the when you were making, yeah, oh, legacy. Well, well, when the, we were making legacy. Yeah, yeah, well, the, the first, that's what we were trying that's to tell you earlier. Yeah. The first album was such a collective of everything, everything that we were yeah. before the that. Yeah. Now, if you're talking about, that's where I was going to kind of go into where you're talking about the second album and who we were as people. When we started to go towards the second album and we started using love mm. and we added another member, Spec. Spec, yeah. Spec is another anomaly because... When we were on the stage, we were still going through the questions of being two or being a movement because our dancers, remember, went over to Maestro Maestro, because they had their own personal dreams, which we totally respected, and there was no animosity anywhere. Uh, They became Black Eye and Mm -hmm. DRK, so that was excellent. So as that's going on, we're on stage, we're doing stuff, and we're performing, and we're still going through the question because we're still kissing, shaking hands and kissing (laughs) babies, you know what I mean? Because we're such a... We're such a grounded group. We were never really into the whole thing of being all the way up on a pedestal in mm-hmm. order to be famous. Mm-hmm. We felt that just being a man from the crowd was fame enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just saying we're here, but our stuff is going over there. So anytime we went over to England and Europe and did a show and came back, mm-hmm. we went right back to the hood. We were right back in Jane and Finch. Thus is why we filled my definition inside of the hood. Right, right, And part right. of in the video, it says you want an all expense paid trip to the hood, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. which, which is unheard of for Well, I'm game glad shows. you brought up definition because mm-hmm. uh, you won uh, Best Rap Recording at the Junos. Mm. Did that help your career? I think it did, but I can't really trade a Juno in even for a Happy Meal right now. No. <laughs> but people give us respect for the fact that we did it. Yeah. We got gold and platinum <laughs> records. We got a lot of accolades, but I think what people really love about us is mm-hmm. the memory they captured. Mm-hmm. I think that's more gold than any trophy because people... Even to this day, when, when, they, when they hear a song, they're like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. why is your face in my sink? I was doing this at that time. Mm-hmm. My definition when it came out, oh, it was such a blessing because it totally introduced me to hip hop and all of this. I was never even into hip hop, mm-hmm. but that was my introduction into just being creative and different things. There, this, uh, 
I get the creative aspect of it, mm -hmm. but you also have to make a living. Yeah. Uh, being yeah. a commercial hit is really important. And a lot of people think that once you get commercial success, getting a Juno is that stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. um, back in 1998, the Rascals turned down the award in yeah. protest because um, during the televised portion of the Junos, they never televised yeah, we like, televised. the awards yeah. for rap, reggae, or dance. Yeah. Yeah. And I, always, I believe... They always had it in the basement. Yes, and I believe up until the year after the Rascals protested in 1998 was the only year they actually televised uh -huh. the rap yeah. recording to this day. Yeah. Um, when you think about, like, Drake, um, a Canadian, is the biggest face Guys, of hip-hop in the yeah. world. Mm -hmm. How supportive is the music industry in Canada for rap artists? I think the foundation of where it all stems from, the concept of just um, the new, the next thing coming out, I think that Drake is very like uh, necessary mm -hmm. because everything, a, a baton has to be passed, you know what I mean? And I think the way the hip hop industry works, it always looks for the new thing. So even if you're doing great hip hop, sometimes great hip hop is not what's gonna, you know, the cream doesn't always rise to the top, you know? Mm -hmm. The kid's always looking for the new thing. When they go to school, they, they, they ask, what's the new thing? It's not, it's not necessarily what's a good thing. So in 2017, you got so much groups coming out and you got the internet, you got so much ways mm -hmm. of putting things out now just to express yourself. And um, I, I think that the, the awards and the accolades and the fact that uh, we have a variety of different artists coming out now through the internet mm -hmm. is, a, is a blessing. And I think any blessing that's not, that, that is ignored becomes a curse, you know? So for us, we didn't have all the avenues. I, I, I wish we had those avenues. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. Back you in know the what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. things would be a lot different, but that's not the case. We had to develop an actual uh, uh, industry. Mm -hmm. Like when we went to Sudbury, there was no hip hop representation for a stage show in Sudbury. Mm -hmm. there, was no, there was no setup. We really had to go hand and foot through territories and through but even, when you, but even when you were in, in Toronto, um, yeah. there was no station, music station here. No, but... And you were part of Can't Repress the Cause. Well, yeah, 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 that's and right. Which, like, I mean, a lot of people might not realize that back in the day, there was no radio station that played no, there live wasn't, music. Yeah. No. So you were getting played in England by BBC Radio 1, mm -hmm. but All people day. couldn't hear you here. No. No. Can you tell us about that, um, how you got involved with Can't Repress the Cause? Uh, well, we got involved through Billy Bryan's. I don't know if yeah. you remember Parachute Club. Mm -hmm. Rise Up, Rise Up was uh, Lorraine Segato's, one of Lorraine Segato's big hits. Um, Billy Bryan's was uh, a master at bringing different cultures together. And when we did Can't Repress the Cause... It was, and it was a music video. To it was a basically music Basically advocating for the need for a, a station that played dance. Yeah, trying to get a, 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 a radio station going. I actually, I remember going to um, City Hall and we got through the city hall doors. And right now you don't see me represented, but I, I usually have a sugar cane, mm -hmm. which was a representation of me being West Indian in Canada. Because when we used to go over and do shows, people were like, I didn't even know black people in Canada. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we used to do interviews on just being black in Canada without even getting into the music. So when this, they found out we were from Canada. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this representation was a sugar cane. I remember going into, um, can't uh, going into City Hall and all the artists were representing themselves and I was like, you know, should I leave this sugarcane because mm -hmm. it was a big part of the concept of who we were and Billy was like, no, nah. he was so hood. He was like, no, nah, you bring it. Mm -hmm. You bring it because this is part of what we're doing. I remember getting to the front door and they're like, you can't go in with that stick. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, that's the funny thing about it because they look at the music, they look at the imagery, they look at what you're doing and it's like, it's just a stick, it's just songs, it's just this. But it was a whole thing that, it was a whole movement in Toronto that wanted to happen and was going to happen whether you gave us a radio station or not. And now we got radio stations because it, it was undeniable. And you guys were a part of that. And we were a part of that development. It must make you feel proud to look back and oh, yeah, know yeah. that you were part of that foundation. Yeah, yeah. I feel that like... Um, when you, know, you, when you look at what you, um, when you look at developing and when you look at um, what, what you leave behind and when you look at um, your purpose in life, you kind of have to think to yourself, did I make a change in not just somebody's life, but in something permanent for the next generation to mm -hmm. benefit something from? Something that's bigger than you. That's right. So things that we're doing now before the six, like you're mm -hmm. saying, is what Drake is benefiting from, is what, you know, um, you know, 
Shad, well, Kanon, Shad, Kanon, Weekend, any one of those, Weekend, any one of them yeah. that come after is, and that's the kind of thing. So when we go out and we, you know, we get in love from, from that because they know that is a fact. They feel that. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that's, that's more precious than, than, than the actual songs mm -hmm. is the fact that they have the opportunity mm -hmm. to not have to go through what we did in order to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They have other avenues they can... Yeah, they can, lots they of can, that in the yeah, they can And they use. don't have to say, we're putting it on the map because... It's been on the it's map. It's been yeah. on the map. Q, you wanted to add something? Uh, there's so much. I think that what I wanted to add has gone out of my head. Okay, right let's play some more music of yeah. yours, uh, Sheldon. Let's get to the next roll in, please. Bring me to the end and I'll be me. Open up your eyes wide so you can see a stick to be me. How I kick my rhymes down pat within the circle. How we do when we kick that fat. But where's the meaning? I take it one night by one night. But where's the meaning? I take it one day by every day. I pick a rhyme I chose and put it number one inside my placement. So look to find the sound inside my basements. 13 is sellers full of samples with ample time to loop. It's just the beats from the dead from my head with my troop. And it'd be cool if all the time was like studio. Time. But days are long enough for spec without the rest of my time. I think I'm manic depressive and not aggressive enough. You could try to be hard, but damn, you still won't be rough. Life is back for the ball. Life is fat after flow. Life is waiting for a deal when you like that. No. That was from your second Ooh. album, Subliminal yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Stimulation, and that was yeah, spec. Yes. That's spec. Um, and on that album, too, you collaborated with the legendary gang star. Uh -huh. um, how did that come about? Well, like I was saying from the very beginning, uh, about Dream Warriors being two and then being a group mm -hmm. and then going back to two and then going back to some concept of a group spec, mm -hmm. which you're just hearing. He was going back and forth from Montreal to Toronto and Love actually helped develop his skills because when he first started out, he was an on beat all the mm -hmm. time, you know, mm -hmm. and he was very like young to the industry, you know, and he was just a friend, he was just a person in the crowd. So we said, you know what, that is a Dream Warrior. Mm -hmm. So we brought him up off the stage and put him into a song and we actually uh, made him part of that album. And that album was an act a representation of where Dream Warriors mentality was going. We were like, you could be a person from the crowd in this group. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. And, and um, Gangstar was another one of our quote unquote, you know, friends from overseas over a different- You were telling you know. me a different story before we started taping. What was that story? Uh, I, was, I know you were really uh, a little reluctant to tell it, but yeah, with yeah. all respect because- Well, Gangstar, the story I was telling you was about um, us touring through Europe and the fact oh. that we were um, we were trying to set up a, 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 a European and an England tour and Gangstar actually came and opened for us, which a lot of people in Toronto don't know about, but we were kind of like So, so they huge. opened up for you. Yeah, we were yeah. so huge in Europe and England mm -hmm. that um, it, 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 like people here wouldn't understand it because we're so hand and foot, like we'll just be like, we'll take a bus even though we have a car to drive. We'll, we'll, we'll shake a hand, even, and we wouldn't do the stardom thing. We'd be in the crowd just with everybody else hanging out. And then we go over to England and, we, England, and we cannot, we cannot go into any environment that will shut down. Like, when we yeah. did interviews, uh, or we, when we did uh, signings in places, the place shut down. So when we brought Gangstar and we, we, we did that whole movement, they came out with Jazzmatazz after, and it was great. Solar. And the, so maybe you influenced them. Oh, yeah, most definitely, yeah. because even when um, Guru, we had a birthday party for him in Japan, mm -hmm. and it was his birthday, and he was like, he was kind of teary-eyed, and then we were like, what's up, what's wrong? He's like, you know, that's crazy, man. And you know, he has a deep voice. I can't, mm -hmm. do, I can't do Guru's voice like that. <laughs> but he's like, Rest in peace, Guru. Yeah, 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 yeah rest yeah, in peace, Guru, because he's passed away now. We he's just like, a he's such a great yeah. friend. And he's like, yo, you know, Lou Q, like, nobody's ever done something like this for me. Like, we had a cake, we just threw it. It's in the room, you know, in the hotel room. Was like, and he was just like, and we just couldn't understand that. Like, we were like, come on, man, like, we're family, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, this is incredible because Guru, uh, yeah. when it comes to hip hop and rap, he's one of the foundation. Yeah, I mean, and and he played. They play with jazz a lot. And they play with that's jazz also, a lot. That's also that linked us. But I kind of um, I'm frustrated on yeah. your behalf because when it it feels like you're kind of underappreciated in Canada. Yeah, we. Listen, we I'm gonna let Q talk because Q. You're right. Hardly talk. You're right. We were underappreciated in Canada. I can't, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because there's not support for the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. not just the rap. I don't know what it is. Because if you're I going to- I tried to figure it out myself, but I don't know what it is. But yeah, we weren't, we were doing our work, 
because we love what we were doing. Mm -hmm. But coming, and when we came back here, we were just normal guys, but it wasn't, it wasn't like they understood or they appreciated what we were doing. Because we had a lot of people coming here to film us. We said, look, we're not going to fly over there. You guys are going to come here. Yeah, we brought we're going to show you sure Canada mm -hmm. what you don't understand. And what, you know, we have a great city, blah, blah, blah. We did all of that. So you're ambassadors to Toronto way before it was you know, something. You know, I, I never think of it like that. Yeah. But that's the label that's that the things that we've done. How much better do you think we are now at recognizing talent in our own backyard? Uh, I, think I think we're, we're much the, better. I think the yeah. younger generation yeah, is accepting each better. other. Mm -hmm. They're accepting each other a lot more and working together so that they're making it stronger. I don't think the powers that can do a lot to help the groups mm -hmm. are really doing a lot unless you become a Drake that mm -hmm. goes out, right, gets right, right. power, mm -hmm. comes back and says, I want to do this. And they're like, we'll follow you. Mm -hmm. Because basically, that's what it is, man. Instead yeah. of beating, beating around the bush. Because it's tough. When people you know have I mean? their own personal dreams and their mm -hmm. dream is to be famous or be rich, how do you be rich and famous and then come back and give it away? You know what I mean? So it's hard for them to, to flip and switch. Mm -hmm. You got to have something in your foundation from the start. You know what I mean? We're West Indians living in Canada. That's why we had the sugar cane to represent who we were around the world. And here, so, Is there more music for Dream Warriors? Uh, we, whatever door mm -hmm. opens... If it's a good opening door, then it could happen, or you know, depends on what comes. See, you know, see, you you gotta come and chill in my living room. You hear music <laughs> playing all over the place. So girl. you're making music then? I'm like, I like, I'll sleep and my hand will be doing this writing mm -hmm. songs. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. The the thing is not about writing songs and doing music because that's in our DNA. Yeah. The thing is about are we gonna release it and present it? You, know you should. I, mean? I don't know. You I, have I, an audience. I you have a, fans. We got a lot of well-known people uh -huh. wanting to do some work with us. Well, I don't want to mention some names, but it's right here. It's like We won't tell anyone, we promise. Tell. You can tell us. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here, both of you. Thank you. It's, it's good seeing you success. again. Thank I, you. you. Know, I, yeah. I never thought I would, you know, come into that path of meeting you again. Yeah, yeah it's after, weird how you know? the universe works, right? Yeah, yeah, the universe yeah, yeah. is great. But we will, be, we will be doing shows, and we will be yeah, um, yeah. touring across we Canada. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing some of the festivals. Uh, where can people find out information of what you guys are doing? Instagram. We are Dream Warriors. Thank you, and continue yes. success. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.